So we just wrote code to find the middle character of a string. Now, if this is something that we'll be doing repeatedly, then there's no sense in repeating all of this code every time we want to do it. So in any programming language, uh, you can condense all of this into your own user-defined function. Okay. Now remember, in R, whatever we've been doing is we've been calling functions that have been provided to us offhand, right, out of the box. So for example, str underscore sub, str underscore length, str underscore c. Many functions that we have looked at so far are all functions that are provided to us out of the box, which we can use. Okay. Now, we are not restricted to only using those functions. We can, in fact, write our own functions as well. So as an illustration, I just want to show you how we can take this particular operation of finding the middle character and converting that into our own user-defined function, which we can then use just by calling the function rather than writing all of the code again and again. Okay, so I'm going to write a function for the first version in which if the length of the string is even, then the middle character is the null string. That is, there is no middle character. And if the length of the string is odd, then we are going to do, uh, you know, divide, uh, do an integer division by two and get the next character. So for example, if the length is seven, it will be the third and fourth character. If the length is nine, it's going to be the fourth and fifth character. If the length is 101, it's going to be the 55th and 56th character and so on. Okay, so I'm going to write, convert that into a user-defined function. Uh, so here I'm saying I'm going to call my function as mid underscore care. Okay, and then see the assignment operator as usual. Then I'm saying it's a function. Okay, and this function that we are writing, the name of the function is going to be mid care. It's going to take just a single argument, str. Okay, and then we are saying len is str len. This, this code is just as it used to be before. Nothing different. Okay, except that whenever we were using the function name, the, the string name earlier, I'm just using the name of the argument str. Okay, so I'm saying whatever string is passed to the function, take its length, store it in the variable len, and then perform this if else function which if s is also a function. So I'm saying if the length is even, then the value of this if else is the null string. And if the length is odd, the value of this if else is this whole thing, which is the middle character, right? So once we define this function and execute it, uh, then the function definition is available for us to use, right? That now this is not a built-in R function. This is a function that we have just written for our own use. Okay, and once we have defined it and once we have loaded the function, we can then use it as many times as we want. So for example, I could say mid care one, two, three, four, five. So the middle character is three because the length is odd. Or if you did mid care one, two, three, four, five, six, the length is even, and therefore the middle character is going to be the empty string. Right? So you could try it out. Uh, of course, when you after you write this function, you have to first execute the function definition so that the function is available for you to use. Right. Of course, as usual, the code file that I have provided you for this session has this function definition. You can just execute it directly. As you know, in R, you can find uh, help on anything by typing question mark, name of the function, or question mark, and name of the object, basically. So here, uh, so if you can do these things, right? So for example, there's a function called str underscore wrap, and there's another function called str underscore trim, and uh, you can get help on those functions by just typing question mark. So for example, I can go here into RStudio and type question mark str underscore. Uh, so this is an advantage of uh, using the uh, you know, string R functions, right? So you type str underscore and it brings up all the function names with str. So that's very convenient. So I can say str underscore uh, trim or wrap is what we were looking at. So I'm going to scroll down, wrap. Okay, so question mark str underscore wrap, and here it gives you the help on that. So you can read that and find out what str underscore wrap does. Similarly, you can find out what str underscore trim does. Okay, uh, so that's uh, just you know something that you can use to uh, educate yourself. Right. So read this help documentation. You may not understand everything, but uh, generally, you will find useful information by which you can make out what's going on. And the good thing is that they've got examples that you can just execute directly. Right? 
So, of course, you'll be able to get all this only if you have loaded string R. That is, library string R would have had to have been executed before you can do these things, because otherwise, uh, the system won't recognize these functions like str underscore wrap and so on. So, having looked at some basic commonly used string functions, we are now coming upon an extremely exciting topic. It's extraordinarily powerful, and once you master it, uh, you'll be able to do so many useful things with textual data. Okay, and that is called the field of regular expressions. Okay, let's take a look at some common text processing tasks. So, for example, which blog posts or tweets among tens of thousands mention the word sanctions? Okay, so, you know, it could be quite uh, current in terms of its uh, Im implications. Or, a field in a data file starts with a character and is followed by zero or more digits, then contains one or more uppercase letters, followed by an underscore, not and underscore, an underscore. Split it into these components. Right, so you've got several digits and then a couple of uh, one or more uppercase letters. So for example, it could be 1357 uh, uppercase AQR followed by an underscore. Right, so you may want to then uh, split it, right, take the numbers out and take the characters out separately. Right. Uh, the, the problem is we cannot do this with any of the functions we have studied so far easily because it doesn't say it has exactly three digits or exactly four digits. Then in that case, we could have used str underscore sub to say take out the first three characters and then take the next three characters. You don't know the length, right? So you cannot do it easily with the uh, functions that we have already learned. But this kind of processing is pretty common. Or find all the emails among the millions in which the word urgent appears more than three times, right? So for example, let's say you're trying to identify some spam emails, right? And spam emails tend to contain these kinds of words, urgent and this and that and uppercase, etc. So you just want to find, you've got several documents and you just want to find those documents in which this particular word occurs three or more times, okay? So that is also pretty complicated. It could appear three times, it could appear a hundred times, but we have to find that out. Okay, so that is also a very important kind of processing. Okay? And replace all occurrences of uh, O in E1 with the digit 1, TW02 with the digit 2, and so on. So that is also some kind of processing you may have to perform. Uh, or uh, this is very, say, very similar to our second one. A field consists of one or more digits followed by one or more letters followed by a set of digits. Right? Change the field such that the positions of the digits is swap, are swapped. Right? In other words, suppose it was uh, 1, 2, 3, and then A, B, C, 4, 5, 6. Now we want this to become 4, 5, 6, A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. In other words, the 4, 5, 6, and 1, 2, 3 are changing positions. And of course, it doesn't have to be three characters. It could have been 1, 2, 3, 4, and then uh, you know, uh, X, Y, Z, and then 3, 4. Right? So you want 3, 4, X, Y, Z, 1, 2, 3, 4. That is the, the last set of digits and the initial set of digits are exchanging places, right? So there are all these kinds of processes that we may have to perform when we have string data. And of course, all of this can be done with the functions that we've already studied, but that would require us to do extensive, complicated programming, not at all trivial uh, programming. But the beauty with this field of regular expressions is that all of these tasks become uh, comparatively or very, very easy. Right? That's because the complexity has been abstracted into uh, some functions that R already gives us, and so we can just use that and get our job done. Okay, So that's what we're going to look at uh, in this part of the course. So as I've said, these kinds of tasks are extremely complex to do from scratch and extremely simple with regular expressions. So in regular expressions, what we'll do is we'll give a regular expression and we'll see what matches what. Okay, so initially we'll use the str underscore view function to just see what regular expressions match what words or what strings. Okay, and then str view is just for us to learn regular expressions. We'll, in an application, we would typically never have to use str underscore view. This is just for us to learn and understand regular expressions. Okay, so let's see how str view works. Okay, so we have to first, of course, have our library string r uh, loaded. Uh, if you're just continuing the lecture, you have already loaded it. Otherwise, do library string r. 
and then again we are creating a string a, a vector of strings apple banana pear and then we are saying str view x double quotes a n right? that is what we are saying is show me all the strings which belong to this vector x and that contain a n somewhere in there okay which means a p p l e doesn't have an a n anywhere it won't match banana definitely has a n in a couple of places a n a n so that's a, that's going to match and pair doesn't have an a n anywhere so pair is not going to match so if you do str view x comma a n then what you will see is that in our studio the last tab that we have not discussed so far is called the viewer tab in that tab it will show you which ones match and where exactly it matched okay so let's go ahead into our studio and actually see how it how it works I'm just scrolling down to the part where we've got okay so here it is uh, I've already loaded uh, the library string r okay so I define str and now I say str underscore view x comma a n and this is the viewer tab that becomes active now and it shows you that you've given me three strings apple banana pear and this is the one that matches with a and the other two don't match okay so again, uh, like I did said earlier, we are using the string view function, str underscore view function, simply to learn uh, regular expressions, right? That is, given a regular expression to understand what all it will match and what all it will not match. Once we have learned it, we'll start using it to do other things, okay? So in a real application, you would never have to use str view. This is just for us to test out uh, before we write a regular, regular expression in our application. We may want to test it out to make sure that it does what we intend, and that's what str underscore view is for. And so that was uh, str view underscore a, and this is pretty simple. It just says, uh, you know, when there's just characters inside your regular expression. Regular expression, of course, you can see is simply specified as a string, right? And if you just provide normal characters, then you're just looking for an exact match, any word that has an a n anywhere in it, okay? Now, uh, we'll do a little bit more complicated things now, slightly more complicated things. So here, the, uh, the, the character, special, the regular expression can contain normal alphabetical and numeric characters, but it can also contain certain special characters. The simplest of these special characters is a dot, okay? And a dot is capable of matching any character. So for example, suppose we use this uh, thing, str view x comma, dot a dot that is we are saying look i want to match any words that contain any character followed by an a followed by any character right that means this will not match apple right because apple doesn't have uh, it starts with an a but it doesn't have anywhere inside it an a with one character before and one character after whereas banana does right so you've got a it's got a B before and an N after. And in fact, it has it here too. This A has an N before and an N after. Pair two, this A has an E before and an R after, right? So banana and pear, they match this regular expression, uh, but apple doesn't, okay? So if you do that, then basically you're saying, show me all the words that have an A sandwiched between any two other characters. Doesn't have to be alphabets. It could be an underscore, it could be a number, it could be a special character like a hash, anything. Okay, uh, we're just saying I want any occurrence of uh, A which is between just two other characters, right? And it, there could be many characters before this and many characters after this, but I'm just looking for, show me any case where A occurs between two, any two other characters, okay? Of course, you may think, well, why would I ever have to do this? But there are many others, many situations where uh, you may not be searching for one single character, but you may be searching for a particular word which is sandwiched between uh, two other characters and in fact those two other characters may be blanks okay. uh, so and so on okay so that's the idea of using str underscore view to identify the matches and we have learned how to match make an exact match for a particular string uh, which occurs anywhere inside a given string or we have learned the use of the dot uh, special character to match exactly one character right so this matches one character this matches one character so uh, if there's no character before A, then that doesn't count, right? So if you run this, you'll see this result, and it shows you that apple didn't match, but banana matched and pear matched. Interestingly, you'll also see that 
uh, inside the word banana, right, you see that our match dot a dot occurs in two places, right? A N A, that's one, and N A N is another. It matches actually the re regular expression in two places, but by default, the regular expression matches. They match just the first occurrence, right? If you want them to match all occurrences, then there is another option to do that. But right now we're just looking at the simple cases. Okay, um, now sometimes what you want to do is you've got the dot character and we are using it with its special meaning here. We are saying I'm using dot as a, you know, as a regular expression special character, which means it can match any character. Now, of course, that begs the question of, well, what if I simply want to match the actual character dot? What do I do? Because if I just simply put a dot, then it's going to match any character. What if I want to match the actual character dot? 